Let me tell you about something before we start. From now until the end of April, you have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to visit Battleship Texas while she is undergoing repairs. This will not only be your chance to tour the dry dock and get a close-up look at the work being done, but even stand underneath the immense hull of the world's last dreadnought battleship. Go to the link in this video's description to get details and make a reservation. We're about to take another deep dive into rarely seen spaces on Battleship Texas. Before we do, be aware that you're going to see considerable corrosion and damage caused by flooding that could not be controlled until 1988 when the ship went to dry dock. You'll also see repairs made between 2014 and 2018 that helped the ship survive and get to dry dock six months ago. She's still there and in the process of receiving major hull repairs. These will make it possible for the ship to be drier than she's been since 1948, lessening, if not eliminating, future corrosion damage. With that, long-term sustainable projects can be planned and implemented that will allow this magnificent ship to last for another hundred years. So, let's go ahead and take the dive. We'll start out on the main deck where there are many hatches that can take us below, so we'll start at one of two that are over the general area where the spaces are located. We are now on second deck close to turret 3 barbette, which is the armored cylinder that protects shell and powder hoist and electrical connections that travel up to the turret. We can use one of the narrow ladders against the barbette to go to third deck. There are still passages and open areas on this level, but they're subdivided into smaller areas isolated with bulkheads and watertight hatches. Many of the deck hatches, ladders, and vertical passages called trunks that go farther down can be difficult to negotiate, so we're going to use a large trunk in the evaporator pump room to gain access to the turret 3 handling room. This is a particularly productive trunk. Once down at the next level, we can look forward to see into the aft electrical distribution room. Below us is aft dynamo room, and below that is the condenser room. What we want to do is face aft, where we can go through a door that leads into the turret 3 powder handling room, then into turret 3 handling room, where shells and projectiles came together to be hoisted up to the turret. We're interested in two fairly nondescript doors at the aft end of turret 3 handling room, one on port side and the other to starboard. The small spaces behind them only allow access to a deck hatch and nothing more. Let's start on the starboard side with the climb through the deck hatch that puts us in a very short passage called C-30S on the second platform level. Before we step in, be aware that these videos are not well done because they weren't originally created to show to other people. Their purpose was solely to help me orient myself as I processed hundreds of photos shot in scores of compartments days after shooting them. This is the uh, second platform uh, passage leading down from the uh, starboard side trunk uh, beneath uh, handling room number three. I want to stop for just a second to show you how tough some of these ladders can be. I used that one on the right side that is tilted backwards, meaning that I hung away from it as I descended. On top of that, I had to use small rungs on the deck hatch at the bottom, then step to the side to avoid the deck opening. Any slip would have resulted in falling through to the lower decks, hitting hatch edges on the way down. Now imagine doing that in a hurry while the ship is rolling and tossing in heavy seas. As I recall from the plans, this is bomb storage in here. Yeah. Looking at the outboard end of the passage is the door that leads into C-31M. By the way, the M in its designation tells us that it's some type of ammunition magazine. You can see that there are saddles attached to the deck on which bombs could be secured. There is also a rail attached to the overhead on which a chain trolley could be used to pick up a bomb and roll it to a hatch in the passage, then lifted to the main deck close to where the catapult and aircraft were mounted on turret 3. Let's now look at the inboard end of the passage into C-28S. Our walk inside uncovers a real hidden treasure, the aft gyro compass. All right, we are in half gyro looking toward the port. We have a sound powered foam board. In the center is a Sperry Master Gyro Compass. Uh, this is not true to the ship, but it's certainly representative of what would have been in here. If we look inside its housing, you can see a very complex mechanism whose operation was almost magical. 
I highly recommend that you perform a web search to learn more about its operating principles. It's a terrific example of what can be done when physics combines with engineering to create a device that was able to self-seek north and provide compass bearings far more accurate and precise than any magnetic compass. Ahead is the control board for it. It's the uh, forward bulkhead or resistor bank, power switching, and a controller for a, genera a motor generator, which would have been down here on the floor. Once back out in C-30S, we'll climb down its deck hatch into an unmarked passage to the hold deck. Once there, we can now visit three more compartments. Up until now, practically all spaces on the higher decks contained machinery or ammunition and handling rooms. Once down here, there's much more space available for ship stores and provisions. I'm on the hold deck level, starboard side passage below handling room number three that leads into provisions rooms that we will be looking at shortly. Uh, pretty heavy corrosion in here. We'll start at the base of the ladder and look forward where we can enter C-13 provision stores. Provisions are primarily food for the crew that would have included canned goods and dry non-perishable foods like pastas. There would have also been large quantities of K-rations, which were pre-packaged combat rations for use when it wasn't possible to prepare meals. This is C-13S, starboard side provision room, below turret 3 handling rooms and magazines. There is standing water on the uh, deck, so I will not enter the room. And here we can see yet more of that support structure that's carried down from second platform and used to support turret 3 and its barbette. It will continue down to the inner bottom where it ties into the ship's hull framing. Back in the passage, we can turn and face outboard where we can then enter C-14S, another provision storeroom. Okay, this is C-14S, starboard side provisioning room. Uh, beneath turret 3 magazines and handling room, starboard side. Okay, let's go back into the passage for a very short walk inboard to provision storeroom C11S. When we enter, we'll be looking to our right. This is C11S, another provision storeroom, starboard side. Uh, Hold deck level uh, beneath the uh, number three handling rooms and magazines. Considerable piping. Not certain if they're flooding or may perhaps fuel. That finishes the starboard rooms, so we'll climb back up to first platform and the turret handling room where we'll walk across to the port access door and hatch that leads down to the second platform and the short passage C-30P. This is uh, looking outboard C-30P short passage on uh, second platform beneath the uh, number three handling room and port magazines. Like its opposing passage, this one gives access to two compartments, and like finding the gyro compass on the other side, going into C-28P has some interesting artifacts. Okay, this is uh, C-32, second platform. It's shown as GSK stores, but uh, in actuality is used to store compressed air primarily fed from the eight air compressors located in the two engine rooms. As you can see, we have quite a bit of capacity here.
These compressed air tanks, also called accumulators, were used as a second means of storing large amounts of air, used as gas ejectors that cleared the 5-inch and 14-inch gun barrels of flammable gases and residue as their breaches were opened. Okay, back in C-30P, we'll look outboard where we can see and enter C-32 GSK stores. This storeroom could be used for a variety of stores that could include anything from light bulbs to toilet paper to paintbrushes. This is C-32 GSK stores. We have one level left, which is the hold deck on the port side. Like the short passage on the starboard side, it's unmarked and offers entry into three more provisioned storerooms. We're in the short uh, port passage, hold deck, uh, beneath turrets, uh, turret handling room three and magazines, looking outboard, and now pan around toward inboard. Looking forward, we can enter C-12. Before we go, I want you to notice the heavy vertical structure against the bulkhead. There's a similar one in C-13 on the starboard side. Okay, this is marked as C-12, provisions room, located hold deck level, port side beneath the number three handling rooms and port magazines. I will not be entering the room since I do not, it's too deep of a step down. With a few steps outboard in the passage, we'll come to C-14P, the second provision storeroom on this level. This is C-14P, provisions room, port side, hold deck, uh, beneath turret three magazines on port side. As you can see, portable deck has been removed. The inner bottom has been restored. Various pipes. Uh, no marking to indicate function. Turning back to the inboard end of the passage takes us to C-11P, the last of the provision storerooms in this part of the ship. Again, there are multiple fuel lines that interconnect to carry fuel forward to the boiler rooms. Okay, this is C-11P tied in with our first set of photos down here. I may have accidentally called the room incorrectly on the first video. As you can see, portable decking has been removed. There's one last space to show that cannot be accessed from this part of the ship. If you look between the two C-11 provision rooms, you'll see passage C-10 that runs along the ship's center line between the engine rooms and dynamo condenser room. It can only be accessed through a small watertight door in the condenser room, and its location in the ship means that it's extremely well protected. This is important because the passage fills the critical job of carrying all of the high-capacity electrical circuits that power the aft portions of the ship, including the engine rooms, turrets 3, 4, and 5, and even the ship's electrical steering. This is a pat wiring passage C10 that's uh, entered through the aft bulkhead of the aft dynamo condenser room.